Hi everyone, it's Pastor Mike Philiber back to read another cool book, The Good King's Feast, An Invitation to the Lord's Table. This one was also written by Elizabeth Harwell and illustrated by Laura Pennebaker. And that's the kind of picture she does. It's really pretty cool. All right. So kids, take a seat and get ready because here we go. The, Lord, the Good King's Feast, the invita an invitation to the Lord's Table. All right, let me get to the first page here. Hold on, hold on. Let me tell you a story, little one. Can you imagine a table set with all sorts of food and drinks? And imagine there are many, many people around this table with you. It's a meal to celebrate something very special. You see everybody gathered around the table there. They're all sitting down. There's plates and everything there. So imagine that. Actually, what if this meal had a purpose more important than filling your belly? Sometimes in the Bible, God used food to tell the story of his promise to his people. There's a picture of the goblet and there's food here. And, but sometimes God uses the, in the Bible uses stories or uses stories of food to remind people of his promises. Very good. So do you remember how God sent Moses to Egypt to tell Pharaoh to let his people go? On the night before their rescue, God asked his people to do something that seemed a little strange, especially after they had just witnessed nine terrible plagues. Did God ask them to catch all the frogs he had covered Egypt with or pull up the dead plants the locusts had eaten? Did he do that? There's a frog. Look at all the locusts flying around. No, God asked his people to set the table for an important meal. This meal would give them strength for the long journey ahead of them, but it would also tell the story of their rescue. We call this meal Passover. God told them to kill a lamb for supper, but before cooking it, they were to put its blood on their doorposts. This blood would be a sign that they belonged to God and he would keep them safe from the final plague upon Egypt. There's a picture of a doorpost. And there's the blood all around the door jam, around the door. And that way, as the Lord came through Egypt, he would see those who belonged to him. They ate bitter herbs to remind them of their bitter years of slavery. They ate flatbread because there was no time for it to rise, for their God would act quickly. And this meal would not only be for this one night. God told them to keep setting the table in this way on one special night year after year to remember his rescue. This would not be their last meal. This meal was the sign of a future and a promise. There we go. Okay. The terrible night came. God's people set the table and ate this first Passover meal. And God rescued his people and kept them from harm just like he had promised. And when they settled in their new homeland, God's people continued to eat this meal on one special night, year after year, to remember what he had done. But don't forget that this meal was not only a reminder, but a promise. So here they are. This is them traveling from out of Egypt and going to the promised land. The bitter herbs reminded them of the bitter world they still lived in, and the lamb reminded them of the rescue they still needed. They no longer needed to be rescued from cruel Pharaoh, but from the cruelty in their own hearts, in their own hearts, and in those around them. They were sinners, just like you and me. And they didn't just need freedom from a bad ruler. They needed a new ruler. They needed a good king. Look at that picture. What do you think that's about? Looks like a manger in there, maybe. Hmm. The Passover meal was a time to hope for a better story and another rescue. It was a sign of a promise, a story pointing to a savior 
who would one day come to be the good king at the head of their table. So look, it is a manger, and there's a sheep, right? And here's a chair for a throne, a throne chair. The Passover meal was a time for hope. Yes, and he did come. After many years at another Passover feast, Jesus sat at the head of another table and he, he used this meal, the Passover meal, he used this meal to tell a new story about another sort of rescue. On the night before he died, Jesus broke the bread and told his disciples that his body would be broken for them. He took the cup of wine and told them that his blood would be poured out like the wine to cover, like the wine to cover all their sin. See, just like these hands are breaking this loaf of bread, Jesus took the Passover bread and broke it and said, take, eat, this is my body. And then he took the chalice of wine and said, take, drink, this is my blood. Jesus told his disciples that this meal would not only be for this one night. He told them to keep setting the table in this way year after year to remember his rescue. But this meal also came with a promise. This would not be their last meal together. Jesus told his disciples that one day he would eat this meal with them again at his table in a new kingdom. You see bread and wine, right? This is the cup of wine. There's the bread. Here's a Here's the host of a feast. Here's somebody setting the table and feasting with those around him, just like Jesus feasted with his people. The next day, everything happened just as Jesus had said. His body was broken on the cross and his blood was poured out for you, for you and for me. Sin makes all of us the enemies of God. But Jesus' blood, like the Lamb's blood on the doorpost at Passover, marks us as people who belong to him. God rescued us through Jesus just as he promised. So see how they did it in the picture? Jesus' cross, right? The cross is very much what Jesus did there. It's very much like the blood over the doors at the Passover. It's filled with promise. And so after Jesus died, he was buried. But he did not stay in the grave. On the third day, can you make the number three? Make three fingers. On the third day, he came back to life. Then for 40 days, he spent time with his followers before he ascended into heaven to be with his father. How about that? And so here's supposed to be the inside of a tomb, but the door, this is the doorway, and it's open, and there's nobody lying here because Christ is risen. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. All right. Can you say those words? Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Oh, what a gift to have this meal. The best sort of stories are the ones we want to hear over and over again. We break the bread and pour the wine to keep telling the story of how Jesus rescued us on the cross. We may look around us and feel like we still need to be rescued, and there are still scary nights and sin and sadness. But the promise in this meal is that Jesus hasn't forgotten us. He is with us now, and he will eat with us in person again one day. The promise is that this isn't the end of the story. Until Jesus returns, the communion table is a place for us to wait in great hope. The bread reminds us that Jesus had a real human body, as real as the bread you are holding, and that it was broken because he loves you. And the wine reminds us that his blood was given to cover our sin and to mark us as his own. So here's a here are two ministers at the communion table, blessing the bread and the wine so that we all eat together. We look around the table at the people with us and know they are part of the promise too. As we share one bread and one cup, we remember that Jesus is making his followers into a wonderfully new family. This table is as long as all of history and as wide as all the world. And because of the work of Jesus, there's an invitation for you. See, there's the world. See, this, this looks like a table that's as big as the world, right? Because the table, Jesus' table, is open for all kinds of people from every age group and every ethnicity and so forth. And look, there's the Bible and wine and bread. 
always remembering. Just like bread gives strength to our bodies, communion strengthens our souls with Jesus' love and the promise of the coming feast with him and his kingdom. The promise is not that you will remember him, but that he will remember you. Let me read that again. The promise, uh, the promise of the coming feast with him in his kingdom, this promise is not that you will remember him, but that he will remember you. Take and eat and then go out into the world to tell others of this best and truest story. Invite them to the table to meet our good king who keeps his promise. What encouraging words. It's a reminder that he promises that he will always remember us. See them all gathered around the table there eating together. Wow, that's encouraging. And so then the last words of Psalm 23, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And there they are, the picture. There's the woman who wrote it, Mrs. Harwell. And there's the woman who did the illustrations, Miss, Miss Pennebaker. Wow. I hope you enjoyed the book. I'll put how to get a hold of it so that your parents can buy this and read it to you again and again in the future. I'll put it down in the, in the uh, description section of this video. We'll see you next time. Bye.